actually uh, am honored to be able to present an awesome panel discussion. We're going to be talking about community resources in the Bay Area and San Francisco specifically uh, for ML builders, for people working in AI, for people who are trying to go from hackathon to what's next. Um, now, uh, originally we're going to have um, Rocky Yu from AGI House. Uh, he wasn't able to make it, unfortunately. But we have John Whaley, uh, who runs Inception uh, House, and they will, uh, he'll explain a bit more about what that is. We also have Akil Ali. He's the co-founder of Cerebral Valley. Now, I know you all have heard of Cerebral Valley. They uh, aggregate all these amazing events throughout San Francisco and the Bay Area. Um, they had a really cool hackathon at Shack 15. So I'm, I'm sure he'll tell you a lot more about what Cerebral Valley is doing and, and how you can get involved. Moderating the panel is going to be uh, Dmitry uh, Payanov, um, co-founder at Prague.ai. Um, and he's going to, uh, to get us started here. So thank you, and enjoy the second half. If you guys want to head out, there we go. Thank you, Roger. Hello. Hey. Hey, everyone. Good evening. It's a great place to be. Uh, great Star Theater, and uh, today we're going to be hosting a panel on um, um, community resources in the Bay Area. My name is Dimitri. I've been in the city for seven years. I'm uh, myself a founder and builder, and I've been watching communities change and the city change. So today is the new era of AI, and we have uh, Akil from Cerebral Valley and John from Inception, one of the best communities in uh, San Francisco. So Akil, would you introduce yourself? Thanks, Dimitri. Hey, everyone. Uh, recognize a lot of faces around here. So, in the last few months, um, a few fellow builder friends and myself just realized we wanted to live it more uh, others around us in the trenches as we were all pursuing our own startups. And so, as much as we all love networking events and writing our little hello, my name is tags and the little handshakes that most of these general events are going to, we're like, what if we just do things like co work? or just like intentionally go to talk and nerd out with our laptops in front of each other at random coffee shops or hacker houses in SF. And yeah, um, a few months later, here we are throwing some amazing events at Shack 15. I see many of you around the city, uh, a lot of you are on Hayes Valley and other parts of San Francisco, and it's just been a, it's been quite a magical journey. Um, so Cerebral started, uh, Cerebral Valley started as a grassroots community, and it still very much is. We're doing um, co-workings weekly and hackathons monthly out of the ferry building at Shack 15 now. And we highly curate to a lot of the builders, founders, and engineers uh, working on AI or with AI in their projects and startups. And so we have a lot more things coming out that I'm sure a lot of you have already seen this as well. We run a spreadsheet as well as an email list that distributes all the things happening in AI around San Francisco, the Bay Area, and we've actually spun up a couple other chapters, um, for, for example, Cerebral Alley in New York City, where there's a sister chapter going on with some organizing that as well. So there's more to come, and I'm excited to see uh, just the magical summits coming across uh, now, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really awesome. John? Um, hi, everyone. I'm, uh, I'm John Whaley. Um, I, uh, I actually teach at Stanford. I'm on the faculty at Stanford. I teach the compilers class there. Um, and then I had two, two companies. Each one got acquired. Uh, and then after my last company got acquired, I was kind of looking for what do I want to do next. I was very much into large language models like generative AI. Um, and you know, just one day just decided to um, like book, book a ranch house like out in Lodi. <laughs> like, uh, Middle of nowhere, you know, it's just, you know, the, not, not much out there and just invite, you know, a bunch of friends say, hey, do you want to go out to the countryside and just brainstorm and hack and like try to build a company? Um, we did that last November. Uh, the event was awesome. Um, and we had five, you know, 18 people showed up. We had five, five Florida, the, the five groups. All five of them end up actually forming real companies, uh, like they're in real startups. Um, and, you know, this was really interesting because, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things like, hey, when you join YC or Techstars or those type of things, those things are all for profit. They're like try to take your equity. 
Um, we decided to organize as a nonprofit. So we're a 501c3 nonprofit. We don't take any equity in the companies. We just focus entirely on quality and, and quality founders. And it's very much a, a builder energy, builder vibe. So like we run these these uh, retreat events, like these combination retreat hackathon events where you know, people show up and you know, they meet each other for their first time and within 72 hours you're on stage pitching to a room full of VCs uh, of your, your, your newly formed companies. Um, and so the amazing thing is because we, you know, there's just so many amazing people in the Bay Area and we've been able to curate like a really, a really great community, uh, like real companies end up forming out of this. So it's kind of like, a, you know, an espresso shot, like, like uh, just, just really uh, be able to, you know, form a company really quickly. And it's really effective, you know, in terms of taking people who are kind of thinking about maybe starting a company and then uh, getting them to actually, actually do it. And so we've run three events so far. We have another one coming up in, in June. We also run like weekly co-working events um, every Wednesday. And so, uh, you know, just a great, like just great locations around San Francisco and around the Bay Area where kind of everyone, you know, who's in generative AI and, and large language models uh, can get together and just, and just co-work and, and hack together. That, that's really amazing. Um, I have a question for for both of you. What are the the, the people in your community? Are those mostly engineers or founders, or um, and uh, how do you how do you join the community? Yeah, so for me, it's primarily founders. Um, a lot of folks are coming from engineering backgrounds and experience, or currently working full time and supposed to be working from home or something. I think to join, it, it's pretty straightforward. We usually just curate to folks who clearly are just working on projects regardless of you know, you're at an event or not. You know, we have to see that you've been pushing this out, you're building in public, for example, or you're vocal on Twitter. Um, if you're not working already on your own domain email, um, I think that's like a sign of not being 100% dedicated to that project, right? But we also know that you gotta be very scrappy and we have this hacker mentality of this, this caffeine shot kind of this is make the thing, you know, Chad GPT API came out, completely scrap your startup, redo everything, have a lot more cost efficiency. So we just kind of curate to a sort of kind of like hacker builder energy and see like you've been working on some great things. And um, there's kind of some levels to membership in the community, such as like, you're part of this builder space or um, there's like core general memberships where any anyone can join a Slack and kind of find out what's going on or join a mailing list, come to some of the happy hours that are kind of open to anyone. Slack is really amazing, uh, your, your Slack group, yeah. You yeah. can join on Cerebral Valley website and uh, there's there's quite a community there. Yeah, we try to facilitate, I think it's everyone's just excited to talk to each other, so we look for folks who are gonna give more than they ask, mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, um, our, our approach has been, I mean, we, we've been pretty careful about like um, you know, just in terms of growing the community, uh, because I think that there's, there's, you know, a, a lot of value. I mean, like, th there's value in terms of the size of the community, but it really, you have to make sure that people ha continue to have good engagement and like they're and people are engaged and like kind of it's like whenever you go to one of the events, you want to make sure that uh, like all the conversations you're having are really high quality conversations. And so we p actually put quite a bit of thought into it. Th we don't have like an application necessarily. You have to be kind of like it's like a referral only. Thing. If anyone's interested, like definitely come to talk to me, and and uh, you know we uh, happy to, uh, to to refer you into the community. But we but it's a mix. I mean, we have people who are um, not only engineers and not only product people and not only kind of creative people, not only like you know sales go to market people. You need all of those, and like you need all all types of people. Like you need people who. Um, hey, I'm I'm a I'm an engineer, and I know how to build things, but I don't really know much about like large language models or generative AI, but I'm really interested, I wanna learn, right? And so like you need people like that as well, right? Uh, and like, and, and people who have deep, you know, research expertise, they have, you know, papers and an archive and things like that. And you, so, you, so you need a, a really diverse set. And so we try to keep the balance, like, you know, approximately, uh, you know, the right type of balance. So it doesn't kind of skew too much in one direction or the other. Because I think like, you know, if you have only hackers and they're only, then you get, ends up with a hackathon that like it's not, you know, th like you build a cool project, but that's not necessarily gonna have a kind of the bigger impact. On the other hand, if you had just a bunch of product people, you just get just a bunch of Figma and slide decks and stuff, they would be nothing in the <laughs> <stuff> <laughs> real. 
right? So uh, this is why you, uh, you need a mix. So the, the other piece is like, I think we do have a great mix of like um, also experienced people. We have a lot of people who are in the community that are exited founders, two or three or four time exited founders, or you know, founders who are you know, unicorn, uh, you know, founded unicorn companies, et, et cetera. But again, it's like, a, but we also have you know, a 19 year old who, you know, who, who just, who, you know, just is, is graduating from Berkeley in, uh, in two and a half years and, and you know, is, is also amazing. So I think it's, I think like when you think about community, just kind of being really intentional about how, like, like um, who, who is it you're engaging and uh, you know, as, as you're growing and then just making sure that you can kind of, that you know, everybody in the community is kind of getting the value out that they, that they need to get. What I like about AI community is that it's d deeply technical. So a good mix of people is quite important, you know, uh, like a little, like um, um, diversity and skills to take to build a good company. Um, I have a last question for you. Um, what advice would you give to young uh, technical, non-technical builders uh, in San Francisco who are building uh, in, uh, in AI? Yeah, for me, I think there's no more need to call yourself technical or non-technical anymore. Um, you literally have the <laughs> entire world's curated understanding and knowledge trained in a model accessible to you via texting it, talking to it, right? So just understand your own learning needs, be able to talk to your computer, be able to talk to each other. Um, I think the paradigm shifts in education right now are completely disrupted already. We're seeing that with mass adoption already being kind of spoken about um, in mass media, but just personally, right? Um, I've seen some folks teach themselves how to code in November and now raise for their startup as like a solo founder. So I think there's just, uh, what we thought about these barriers to entry are uh, essentially going away. Yeah, and I mean, right now, I mean, we, we are living in an amazing time. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is really the heyday, um, you know, for, for AI large language models. And I mean, I, I've, I've been through in the past, like, you know, the ups and downs, the AI winter and everything. Uh, now is an amazing time to be here in San Francisco, uh, you know, here in the Bay Area and like working on this. Like there are so many, so many opportunities now, um, you know, around this. So, I mean, what I encourage, you know, everyone is to like, like enjoy it, but also there's also a lot of hype. So like, don't, don't buy into your hype. Don't, don't buy into, you know, hey, you know, um, you know, just, just, just kind of try to keep grounded with this, but also like enjoy the time because like this is an amazing time right now. And like, cause we, we're, we're at the, you know, the, uh, the, the peak of, of, you know, of, of, of AI and just, you know, and this is the epicenter of where everything is happening. So, you know, all these great events that are happening like literally every single day. Is it, um, is it a peak? Well, <laughs> I mean, I mean, we, we, it, we're certainly, this is the highest that it's ever been. Right, and I and I, but and so just enjoy it, enjoy it now. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I think that there will be. You know, there there certainly is a lot of hype now. Like, I, I mean, I think I think it's going to continue. You know, for another six, nine, ten, twelve months at least. You know, but but there, and the, but these things do come in waves. But like, definitely enjoy enjoy the time now and t take full advantage of it. But don't don't kind of fool yourself. You know, just because you know, somebody is kind of else is excited about, it. make sure like you're actually excited about the problems that you're working on and make sure that you don't kind of like just, you know, you know, get uh, like smell your own BS, right? <laughs> just the, you know, you just want to make sure that you, that, that you really believe in the, uh, in the, in the, in the stuff that you're working on because like in many cases, like it's easy, th there's so much hype around it now. It's easy to get investors, you know, excited about things. It's easy to get other people excited about things. Make sure that you're, you're excited about it. Like, and you want to, you know, keep working on this and, and work on this, not only, like, even when the hype goes down, you're still excited about it. That's, that's right. Suggestion. On that note, though, um, yeah, when talking about, like, for the younger folks, uh, entrepreneurship in itself, the, the governing rules still apply, right? It's value creation and understanding great systems, solving a problem. So whatever the means is, whether it be AI or something else, um, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship is a separate category of grit, courage, and faith. Well, uh, thank you so much, Akil. Thank you, John. Um, thank you, everyone, for, um, for, for the demos. By the way, amazing demos tonight. Yep. Cool. Thank you.
Awesome. Um, yeah, thank you all. Um, let's, uh, do we have one, maybe two questions from the audience for anyone up here? Uh, quest awesome. Let me come on down. Sorry, you guys are going to have to share the two mics. Uh, who do we got? Uh, well, here, I'll get you first, then I'll grab you over on that side. Hey, I'm Shubham, and I was wondering why a nonprofit? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've seen, so just, just around that, I mean, this, I, I've seen the failure mode of many other of these type of communities where what has happened is that they get, they have a profit motive in there, and then they're forced to scale, and they're forced to, like, hey, we need to make investments, and hey, we, you know, we need to start charging people, things like that, um, and I saw this happen, you know, and it's, you know, to me, it's really sad to see, you know, I mean, things like YC or, 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 or others. I mean, OnDeck isn't what it used to be and others. Like, it's just because there's a profit motive in there. And so this is why, like, we just wanted to avoid that altogether and just say, you know what, systematically, from, you know, this is a founder community. This is for by founders, for founders. Um, and we don't want a situation where a VC will come in or an investor will come in and say, hey, you guys need to scale this. You guys need to, like, replicate this, you know, 3,000 times over in all these different cities. And uh, so, we, so we just to avoid that kind of failure mode, because what happens is, like, once the bar starts to drop and then it, once you start to scale and then you no longer have, like, standards and, like, and the, and the bar starts to drop, then that kind of, like, starts this inevitable decline, whereas, like, you lose that kind of, you know, the magic of the, of the communities. When we run the events, like, we, like, the events we run are 15 people, you know, and so that's, that's, that's intentional because so everybody can kind of really get to meet and, and, and really get to know, like, the other people, like, at the event, like, in, in the community. We also run some kind of a, a few larger events as well, but, like, we, like, a lot of the stuff we've been doing is not, like, hey, let's have a 5,000 person event, but this is, you know, this is, like, let's, like, have, just try to build a, s a, a community around just smaller, kind of more carefully curated uh, events and kind of keep, we keep the quality bar high. That's that's really the the rationale behind it, and like I don't think it was, I think it's really really hard to make money on community and on events, um, as as you know. It's just like it, it's just it's a really tough business um, to be in, and so this is why it's like you know what let's not not even go there. Let's just make this. And so we're literally a five hundred one c three, and like we just have uh, you know we, have, we we get donations and sponsorships to pay for for some of our events, but like just re just hopefully re by removing the profit motive there, we can kind of keep you know. Tr uh, keep having quality events like over time. Awesome, thank you. We got one more question. We're going to try and keep this a little more succinct. So we, uh, we're running a little behind, but that's really good insight there. Thank you. Yeah. So my question is, what are you doing personally, and what do you think companies should do to make this space more diverse? Because I know I've gone to a lot of events like this and uh, seen the lack of diversity. Um, we see that in large learning models and just around artificial intelligence. So, uh, yeah, my question is, is what do y you do personally and what can companies do to change that? Yeah, so Cerebral Valley actually has a woman in AI group. Uh, I think it's a few hundred strong. CC Gong is here somewhere in the audience as are. So she's like a leader for the woman in AI group. Um, so I think it's a really important um, issue that's just widely across every single community. It's a thing across society as a whole. Um, why do you personally just try to stay as educated, as informed as possible, and aware and inclusive of it? And I think it's what I try to do best as a community builder type, um, making sure everyone's voices and opinions are heard. Uh, we have a lot of folks who are ESL, or you know, English is a second, or not a second or third, even like a third language. So just try to make sure that everyone's heard, everyone's participating, uh, and everyone feels like they're getting something out of showing up and having the courage to, to be here. Yeah, I mean, this is this is like a, a, a very important piece, especially because, you know, if you look at um, a lot of what, like, what's happening in artificial intelligence today and machine learning, I mean, it has, like, wide societal impacts, and if you don't have, like, kind of the right, uh, like, you know, representation there, then that's g it's going to lead to... Um, problems down the road as we already see like around bias and models and uh, and things like that. This is, you know, um, th that's something that we're kind of like think about uh, a lot. Like if we, you know, if w w when, w when we run these inception events, like we are, 
the goal there is that the like the, the companies that are formed there, the, the relationships and the partnerships that are formed there, these will be like the leading companies, you know, three and four or five years down the road. And so that's why we care a lot about like having the right type of representation at our at our events where they, uh, you know, because if, you know, if, if, if we have great, you know, women founders and underrepresented minorities and others, if they are founding companies, n the next great set of companies now, uh, that's, that's exactly, um, you know, where we want to be. The other thing I'll say about this is that the strongest communities, they're the ones that, that um, are the most diverse and they kind of incorporate the, you know, the, the, the most different type of viewpoints. You know, it's like whenever you have any type of monoculture, it's, uh, you know, it, it leads to all sorts of problems. It's just like, you know, it's like a gene pool for your, for your DNA. You know, what's the DNA in your gene pool? Right, and if you ha if you're a monoculture, then you have then it's all the same DNA. Guess what? It's like you have a lot of inbreeding, a lot of just you know thing things leading to become more and more extreme, and then all all traits get accentuated, like positive traits and negative traits, and then you end up with these blind spots in the community where it's like you know just kind of go go completely off the rails, right? And so this is why I think it's like super important to have, especially kind of in uh, you know representation in these communities that, that are that where there's a, a lot more um, you know where, where there's kind of an eye towards diversity and eye towards like getting kind of a, you know a, a diverse set and, and different different viewpoints within the community awesome thank you thank you all I really appreciate you being here uh, Dimitri is there any uh, closing remarks and then uh, I just wanted to say on the subject of diversity that uh, Silicon Valley is quite like it's not a city that is pretty male dominant and it always was because of the like I don't know problems with uh, education and uh, uh, yeah mostly with uh, education and you know inequality but the on the on the good side um, since I moved here seven years ago I've never seen so many immigrants uh, anywhere else in uh, uh, in my life and Silicon Valley is pretty diverse in terms of having immigrants from all over the world come into San Francisco and um, build in their, their dreams and their companies. Awesome, well thank you again everyone here. We got uh, Dimitri, Akhil, and John. Um, and they will be available uh, during the ne mingling networking session afterwards. So uh, grab them and ask them any questions you might have and maybe see if uh, you wanna be part of their community.